All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Georgia Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Questions can be specific to an institution that you hear about or in general, and we can have several of the colleges address them as well. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions at the original site where you submitted your registration. Also on that page will be recordings of the presentation, this one and all others that are part of Virtual College Fair. Um, and be sure to check back there in about a week's time to, to view any of those. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters and we'll start off with Tusculum University. Hi there, uh, my name is Steve Schultz and I am your admissions counselor at Tusculum University. Uh, we are the oldest school in Tennessee. We've been around for 226 years. We are a small uh, civic and liberal arts university in the mountains of Northeast Tennessee. Uh, I'm going to kind of breeze through my presentation here since I only have six minutes. Um, but Tusculum University was founded as a civic arts institution. And what that means is our students are not only required to do community service, but they're required to be active members of the community. So not only do we require the eight hours of community service a semester, but we encourage our students to take part in internships and be part of the school board in the local counties or uh, election commissions, things like that. So that when they graduate, they have an active role in their community and how to be a positive force for change where they wherever they move to. Um, as you can see here, we had over 69,000 community service hours amongst our students last year. That is more impressive because we only have about 1,400 students on our campus. Um, so though we require eight hours a semester, we end up, most students end up getting about three times that per year. Um, and then in addition to that, we all take a day off throughout the year, uh, faculty, staff, and students, because I'm also required to do community service to work there. Um, we all take a day off and go to community service together um, around the community. Um, we are, like I said, up in the mountains of Northeast Tennessee. We're tucked up in the little, uh, you can see it here, it's going real slow. Um, we're tucked up right here in the little uh, corner of Northeast Tennessee, about an hour from Knoxville, an hour north of Asheville, North Carolina. So not too far from where y'all are, um, especially if you're from North Georgia. Um, and then in addition to that, we are, uh, last year we were named the 12th best bang for your buck of all the universities in the entire country. Um, and they take that number based off of our average cost of attendance. Uh, and then measure that against the average starting salary of our graduates. Um, last year, we were also top 10 in all of Tennessee and top 20 in the entire South for career placement, uh, meaning over 90% of our graduates have a full-time career within 10 years of graduating, um, which is an incredible number that we're very proud of. And we'll talk more about how we get there uh, later. Now, 100% of our students, every single student gets some form of financial aid. We are a private school, um, so we have uh, different ways we can uh, distribute money. You get an academic merit scholarship the day you get accepted. And this past year, that was between five and $20,000 um, per year, and that's guaranteed for all four years. Um, and in addition to that, if you are from North Georgia, sorry, Southern Georgia and Central Georgia, if you're from North Georgia uh, and you're part of the Appalachian region, you'll get an additional $1,000 a year uh, to come to Tusculum. Um, so we are a great value um, and we do everything we can to make sure that it's worth it for you. Uh, when you come to Tusculum, you are meeting students from all over the world. Uh, this says 33 countries. We're actually up to 36 countries now if you count our incoming spring class. Um, so we have students from 38 states and 36 countries. And again, that's out of only 1400 students. Um, so you will definitely meet people from different areas of the world, that's for sure. Um, we are an NCAA school, we're NCAA Division II, um, which means we can offer athletic scholarships uh, and including scholarships for cheerleading and band. We have over 23 different sports on our campus. Again, a very small school, but we still have 23 sports. Um, and we're one of the smallest schools in the entire NCAA. And we cover everything from baseball and football and basketball to other odd ones like beach volleyball in the mountains of East Tennessee. Uh, and bowling and things like that. So um, if you have any interest in sports, you're welcome to go to our website. Um, we'll talk more about the website later. It's got everything. Um, but you can contact our coaches for camps and things like that. Um, we'll skip this one. 
we don't have time for that. Um, so here you can see all of our different majors and minors. Like I said, we're a liberal arts school. So you're gonna see all the things you would normally expect at a liberal arts school, you know, pre-med, criminal justice, uh, art and design, things like that. We also do have our museum studies major. Um, we're one of the few schools in the entire country that has a museum studies major. So if you wanna work in a museum someday, um, we are your school. Um, we also have an independent, independent program of study. And what that means is uh, if you don't see your major on this list, but we have the classes that could create it, uh, we'll go ahead and create that major for you. And that's especially useful for students who want to go into like law or engineering and know they're going to have to go to graduate school after Tusculum. Uh, we can create the major that will get them to that graduate school. Uh, so we do cover, like I said, we cover a little bit of everything. Um, with as few students as we have, your class average class size will be between 10 to 15 students. Our largest class on campus last year was 28. Um, so it's a very small school with a very um, student focused environment in our school. Uh, you will be required to do internships while you're at Tusculum as part of your major as well as research and that goes for every major whether you're in chemistry or poetry uh, you still have to do research and present your research as part of your major uh, and our interns we can either uh, find it for you or you can search it out yourself uh, and that's you have basically three years of work experience when you graduate from Tusculum and that's how our career numbers are doing so well I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to the very, very end here so you can see our information. I can chit chat just a little bit more. Um, right here, you're going to see my email address, admission at tusculum.edu. Yes, I've been around long enough that that is my email address here now. Uh, so admission at tusculum.edu is how you get a hold of me. You can also go to our website and schedule an in person visit. Um, we can also do virtual visits if you would like. Um, and then down here, you're kind of just seeing a little bit of that's what our campus looks like right there. Our website has our application, which is always going to be free, um, and it's always no essay. And as of right now, our, um, our test scores are optional, though the better your scores are, if you can take it, the more money you get. Um, I think that's the end of my time, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the computer back over. But again, go to our website at tusculum.edu, and thank you all very much for being here. Thank you so much, Steve. Our next institution is the University of Arkansas. All right, thanks so much. I'm gonna share my screen here and go ahead and, and get started. So uh, my name is Megan Garland and I'm the admissions counselor for the University of Arkansas. Uh, we are located in the northwest corner of the state of Arkansas, uh, just a direct flight away from the Atlanta area. Um, so pretty easy to get over to us uh, from over in Georgia. But if you're not familiar with Fayetteville, we are actually the number four place to live in the entire United States. So we are really proud of the community that surrounds our university. I'll tell you a little bit about the town of Fayetteville just so you kind of get an idea of where you would be calling home when you are a student at our university. So um, Fayetteville has a, it's a quintessential college town, a historic downtown square right next to our campus with an award-winning farmer's market, tons of shopping, restaurants, and that sort of thing. But also in the area is a town called Bentonville. It's about 45 minutes from our campus and that is where Walmart was started. We're really grateful Walmart is in the area. It's providing a lot of opportunities for our students. So Walmart requires every single retailer they work with to have an office in the Northwest Arkansas area. What that would mean for you as a student is there are over 325 Fortune 500 companies within a 45 minute drive of campus. Uh, so that's a, a ton of experiential opportunities such as internships, distinguished speakers coming, coming to our campus, hosting job fairs. There's only one city in the world that beats our density of Fortune 500 companies. That city is New York City. So for you to come and be in the middle of the Ozark Mountains with so many different outdoor opportunities, hiking, biking, the Buffalo National River, but have the same experiences you could get in NYC, I think is pretty unique. Um, but uh, of course, while there's a lot going on in our town, there's also a lot going on on our campus. So we have over 400 registered student organizations. There's a wide variety of things you can get involved in. For example, uh, there's a I Heart Dr. Pepper Club. Probably my favorite organization on campus is what they call Tour de Nugget. So they go around to all of the different restaurants in town that serve chicken nuggets and rate them. Uh, so you can get involved in some pretty unique things on our campus. 
We also have over 200 degree programs. Now we do have master's programs and doctorate programs on our campus. So about 100 of those are undergraduate majors that you can choose from when it comes time to select your major. I'll highlight a few of them. So we're in the top 30 business schools uh, in the country. We also have a nationally ranked engineering program that has 12 different disciplines of engineering. Uh, our architecture program is highly rated and then our nursing school has a 100% job placement rate after graduation. So that's just an example of some of our 100 majors. And then we do have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio as well. Now we are a larger school, so we are a D1 SEC school with about 28,000 students on our campus. Your freshman class is probably going to be about 5,000 students. So that's what you can expect. But although we are a large university, we do our best to keep our class sizes as small as possible. The majority of our classes enroll no more than 30 students. So that's what you can expect for most of your classes on our campus and they'll get smaller and smaller as you rise in the ranks. You can of course see there a picture uh, of our Razorback football team. Uh, we love our Razorbacks and so uh, the sports culture is definitely a huge part uh, of our campus culture. We love to come out in our red and white, call the hogs, and you can participate in an all-inclusive student athletic pass for just $85. It gets you into every single home game for every sport, pays for itself within two football games, uh, and it's a, it's a really fun tradition on, on our campus. And then we also are in the top five study abroad programs. So if you want to go and have a world-class experience in another country. Um, there's about 1,300 different options in 57 countries, and we do have our own international campus in Rome, Italy. So I want to talk to you about one of the most important scholarship opportunities available to you uh, through the University of Arkansas. Now this is actually brand new for the state of Georgia as of this year. Uh, and so this is a phenomenal opportunity to save a little bit of money when it comes to that out of state portion of tuition. Uh, it's going to be based on, on your GPA and your test score. However, for any seniors, we are just looking at your test score uh, for the fall 2021 applications. Uh, so we offer it at a 70%, 80% and 90% award. So those percentages would equate to a reduction, a discount off of that additional portion of out-of-state tuition. So for example, uh, for seniors, if you have a 3.2 weighted GPA, we're automatically going to give you a 70% discount on that out-of-state tuition. Uh, then the 80% is for a 3.4, the 90% is for a 3.6. If you can get that 90%, that's automatically almost $15,000 that we're going to offer to you every single year you're a student with us, no questions asked. You don't even have to apply for it, and there are competitive scholarships on top of that. Now, any juniors or anybody applying after 2021, there will be a correlating test score uh, required for each of these, but the GPAs would be the same. Uh, so you can check out our website uh, for those extra uh, qualifications, um, but yeah, that's a, that's a phenomenal way to save a little money coming out of state. So some of the nuts and bolts of our admissions process, um, you've got my contact information there, so make sure you jot that down. Um, but our application is currently open for seniors. Uh, the priority application deadline is November 15th. We are admitting seniors with a 3.2 GPA, no test required for this year. Now our priority scholarship deadline is December 1st, um, and so you want to make sure you submit test scores throughout December uh, in order to uh, be considered for our merit-based scholarships. We do still need test scores. Now, if you don't have a 3.2 GPA, that's okay. Go ahead and apply, uh, and we'll see what we can do for you. We want to get you on our campus, and so we're going to do everything we can uh, to make it happen. But again, my contact information is there. If you've got questions, call, text, email, I'd be happy to help. And thanks so much for joining us today. Great, thank you so much, Megan. Up next is University College Dublin. All right, hi everyone. Let me get my presentation started. All right, here we go. Cade Milafab to everybody. My name is Kendall Hook and I'm with the University College Dublin. Um, and as you can tell, I'm a little bit farther away than all these universities. Um, I'm across the pond located in Dublin, Ireland. So you may be wondering, um, or you may not have ever considered going abroad for your undergrad degree. Um, so why Ireland? Why would you go to Dublin? Um, well, Ireland is everything that you have heard it to be, whether from 
friends, family, movies, the media. Um, it is a safe, friendly, and welcoming country. It's often um, named the um, the world's most friendly country. It's often ranked by the Global Peace Index as the top 10 to 12 um, safest countries in the world. It's a very globally connected, multicultural society. So you're gonna find everybody from all over the world in Ireland. You get a piece of that cultural experience, that cultural immersion, um, but with the benefit of um, no language barrier. So you'll hear Gaelic, you'll see Gaelic, which is pretty cool, but all of your academics are going to be in English and everyone speaks English as well. Ireland's incredibly beautiful. Um, you can get to the mountains, the beach, the, the countryside, the, the urban areas, all within hours of each other. Um, but most importantly, the universities in Ireland are ranked in the top one to two percent of the universities worldwide. So when you go to Ireland and come away with a degree, it's going to mean something back here in the U.S. Dublin itself is often voted in the top 10 best student cities in the world. Um, and that's partly because over half of Ireland's international students are in Dublin and over 50% of, Ir of Ireland's population in general is under 34 years old. So there's plenty to do, plenty to see. Um, it's a thriving center for cultural, arts, education, as well as business. So Dublin is the European headquarter capital. So you're going to find um, Google and Facebook and LinkedIn, Airbnb, et cetera, all have their headquarters located in Dublin, which makes for really great networking opportunities uh, for employability after graduation. UCD is one of the oldest universities in Ireland. Um, we're not the oldest, but we are, we are up there. Um, we're ranked in the top 1% of universities worldwide. Um, in Ireland, we are the largest and most international campus. And we have a range of degree programs from archaeology to zoology and everything in between. Um, we are the largest urban campus in Europe as well. So we are located about 2.5 miles south of Dublin city center. Just a quick 20 minute bus ride to, to all the action. So we do have on campus housing for 3000 students, um, soon to be 6000 students. Um, on campus and we do guarantee it for our international students. Um, the primary difference um, between us and U.S. universities is you're going to have your own bedroom. So you're going to have your own closet, um, your own study space, and a private bedroom. Uh, so it feels more like you're on an apartment on campus. So you share a suite with about three to four other students. But there's food stores, laundry, mini gyms, etc. We have really amazing facilities, very similar to all the amenities that you would find on a traditional U.S. campus. Uh, we have libraries for specific academic subjects. We have student support services, academic services, tutoring, etc. Um, we have over 160 clubs and organizations, including sports. So just because we're international um, doesn't mean that you, you'll be lacking in sports. Um, but our student center is a massive staple on campus um, with auditorium, TV studio, radio pod, pharmacy, Olympic pool, I mean, et cetera. It's super cool. So UCD has 7,000 international students from 140 countries, um, which is really huge. Uh, that's about 30% of our undergrad student population. In comparison, um, U.S. universities typically have around 10%. Um, of our 30% that are international, the majority of them come from the United States. We have 70 undergrad degree programs that range between three to four years. Um, you can accomplish a degree in three years because um, a, a main difference with an Irish education is that we don't have general education requirements like schools in the US. So if you want to be an engineer, you can apply directly to the engineering program and you never have to take another English or writing class ever again. Um, oh wow, that was already five minutes. Um, all right. Well. If you would like, my contact information is Kendall, K-E-N-D-A-L-L dot H-O-O-K at UCD dot E-D-U. I mean, I-E, thank you. You do still have 90 seconds if you're interested. Okay, well, our applications are open October 1st, um, which was this week. We have rolling admissions until December, until July 1st, um, and 80% of our international students receive a scholarship, um, and they range between three to seven thousand dollars on um, the smaller end, but 50 to 100% tuition 
on the, um, the higher end, and those are due in February. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kendall. Up next, we have the University of California, Irvine. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight as I share my screen. Um, I am excited to tell you a little bit about UCI. I am a, um, not a UCI alum myself, but I'm proud to represent the campus and everything it stands for. Um, one of the things we do really well is we help escalate students from whatever socioeconomic status they come in as to a better status once they uh, leave. And a really, um, Money Magazine has ranked us highly for our student earning power because of this. So I'm gonna cover the top five reasons why you might wanna consider UC Irvine. The number one reason why students typically wanna consider UCI is our location. We're in Orange County. We're about 10 minutes from Newport Beach, halfway between LA and San Diego. We are um, really fortunate to have beautiful weather year round. We're 20 minutes to Disneyland. We're also only about an hour and a half to some pretty great skiing too. So students can literally ski or snowboard during the day and be at a beach bonfire that night and our students take advantage of that. The next um, thing that I want to talk about is kind of our, our campus feel and our vibe. So part of having this beautiful outdoor location is that uh, we are able to have a um, park-like setting that you can enjoy year round. So when you look at our physical campus, we're laid out in a perfect one mile circle. It only takes about 20 minutes to walk from one end of the circle to the other, but all of your academic buildings are around that circle. In the heart of campus is Aldrich Park. So this is a beautiful park with over 14,000 trees. So it's very green, very um, beautiful and serene um, during most of the year, but we also have concerts there and we have have four different career fairs throughout the year there. We have our student involvement fairs in this area as well. Our freshman housing is right off this circle. So on your left hand side, you'll see the Middle Earth housing. These are named after Lord of the Rings characters, which is just kind of fun. Our campus is only 55 years young. So when they built the campus, they really had this great design and some really cool quirky things as well, including the names of our halls. The other freshman housing is called Mesa Court and that's just at the very bottom of your screen near those two blue circles. We're a large campus, over 30,000 undergraduate students, and we are a research school. So we also produce the highest level of research of any universities out there, but we rely on our undergraduate students for that because of those 6,500 graduate students, over half of those are over in our medical school, so they are off-site. Uh, also kind of relating to campus is our interdisciplinary approach. So I know a lot of campuses throw this phrase around and it's hard to know exactly what that means. But at UCI, what we mean by that is everything's connected. As you saw from the last picture, we are built in a circle that was very intentional with paths through the middle of the park. We expect all of our faculty to, um, to present and kind of teach in two different schools or maybe teach in one school and do research in another. But for our students, we don't necessarily expect them to do that, but many of them do. So over half of our students double major or major and minor in two completely different schools or disciplines. We have over 85 majors at UCI. Some of the things we're best known for and what students tend to wanna to come across the country to enjoy at UCI are things around the health and medical field. So we have, you can do pre-med in any of the majors you see here, but I typically find students in one of our 10 biology majors, including human biology, genetics, immunology. We also have a really robust public health science program, which I think is more um, needed more than ever. And we're seeing an uptick in interest to that program. So many, many uh, kind of pre-med, pre-health opportunities. I already mentioned that we have a medical school. We also have our own hospital and three other hospitals nearby that we partner with. Another area that we're well known for um, throughout the country is our computer science and our engineering programs. So these are two separate schools, but they're really well connected, um, not only to each other, but really to the rest of the campus as well. So no matter which of these disciplines you're in, you'll be connecting that to other ideas throughout the campus. With both of these schools, you will do a senior design project where a nearby company might hire you to solve some sort of problem. So this is a great way to build your resume while you're with us. Other top programs are our business school, our computer science program, and our dance program. Next, hands-on ways to build your resume. I already mentioned um, that we have great connections with business partners in the 
uh, local community. Over 70% of our students also do undergraduate research. So these are great ways for students to get connected, to build their resume while they're in school. The Irvine area is very suburban looking, but within about 10 minutes of campus, you have one third of all Fortune 500 companies. So great opportunities for building a resume at some of those multinational companies. A few other ways, we also include a lot of project-based learning on our campus that you see here. So everything from extracurricular activities to study abroad opportunities. Next, um, number four reason is our return on investment. Students tend to come in, um, do really well with us, they stay with us, they graduate in a really timely way. Uh, the four-year graduation rate is 69%, but if you go to four years in just one quarter, it's about 80%. Comparing that to the national average of 58%, our students do really well. They come, they stay, they graduate in a timely way, and then we launch them into, the, into their careers. Um, as you can see in that chart there, uh, we've seen that students within 10 years of graduation double their salaries. If you are in some of the STEM fields, your salary kind of bar would be much higher than that as well. We're a very diverse institution. Students come, they get supported, and then they go on to do amazing things. And the number five reason is for the anteaters. It's a really fun mascot. So we do this little thing, looks like a little anteater, and we go zot, 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 and we cheer this at sporting events, but also esports events, and concerts, and graduation, and so many other things on our campus. Finally, I just wanna to touch on our application. We're part of the University of California application um, and that has a deadline of November 30th. UCI will also be test blind for admission or purposes this year. And it is $70 per campus um, of the UCs that you'll be applying to. All right, I look forward to any questions in the q and I hope you all have a wonderful night and thank you for your time. Thanks so much. And our next institution is the University of Colorado Boulder. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. First up is a beautiful picture of our campus um, and a great representation of the size that we are. Um, everything that you see there with a red roof right there at the foothills of the Flatirons is our campus. Uh, we're a campus of about 35,000 students. 29,000 of those are undergraduates. 42% of the students come from outside the state of Colorado, every state in the US and many other countries outside. Um, so a great diversity of people who are joining us on campus um, that you get to uh, meet in your classes and outside as well. Uh, also ranked as number 242 public institution in the US. You find that those resources not only in the classroom but outside in collaborating with your fellow classmates on different projects and the resources of being involved on campus as well. Um, our students really have the mindset that they want to change that change the world. They do that in the classroom and outside. Very civic minded. They want to give back. They want to protect the environment. A lot of like mindedness on our campus in terms of what can we do to better the communities around us and better the better the world around us as well. Surrounding our campus is the city of Boulder, ranked as one of the number one college towns in America. So you're really welcome not only on our university campus, but also in the Boulder community as well. And as you come away from uh, Georgia to join us on campus, you're finding that community and that place to call home that you can leave and the Boulder community really welcoming you to be a part of it. And the university really welcoming the Boulder community to be a part of the university as well. And then outside of Boulder, you have Denver, which is just about 35 minutes south of us. And then of course you have access to all the mountain activities that we enjoy in the state of Colorado. We have over hundred different majors on our campus. There are seven colleges, schools, and programs there on the screen that our students can graduate from, but a lot of flexibility for our students to collaborate and to have majors and minors across the different colleges. One other program that's not represented there is our program in exploratory studies. While you can't graduate from that program, if you're that all important undecided student and not quite sure that path that you want to go, you can enter in the program in exploratory studies and they'll help find that best path for you, the best major to fit those career objectives and goals that you have. Our students are obviously very involved on campus as well. On the size of our campus, you have a lot of different opportunities, over 450 clubs and organizations, opportunities to study abroad if the world opens up to us once again, over 400 different programs in 65 different countries. We are a tier one research institution, so there is a lot of emphasis on research, especially at the undergraduate level. And we have our undergraduate research opportunities program that will help connect you to staff and faculty in your academic discipline that are doing research that really interests you. We have over 300 plus days of sunshine in the state of Colorado, so you 
really have that opportunity to take advantage of everything that we have right in our backyard and our students for the, our students, that's certainly a draw to our campus. Whether that's gathering with their fellow students right there in the center of campus in Farron Field, whether that's taking in one of our Pac-12 Division I football games, watching Ralphie, our live Buffalo mascot, run a loop before games and at halftime. A lot of school spirit there. Um, taking a hike in Chautauqua Park, which is just 15 minutes from campus and takes you on the trailheads into the mountains. And then of course, skiing where you have access to Brackenridge Vale, Aspen, just a couple hours from campus. But for those quick runs, in the afternoon or mornings, even on class days, you have Eldora, which is just 40 minutes from campus. To apply to our campus, we are on the common application, so you'll submit, submit that. These are the other materials that you'll submit for the evaluation of that holistic review for admission to the university. What I wanna highlight there is that for students applying for fall 2021, we are test optional, so you'll choose whether or not you want tests included. Really our theme for that is when in doubt, apply without. We're working through all of our admission process that test scores can only assist students. It will never hurt you if you do decide not to submit a score or you may submit a score that may traditionally be lower than our typical middle 50% in other years. Important dates, our early action date is November 15th, so all of your materials must be received by that date to be considered early action. Regular decision is our final deadline on January 15th. Both are non-binding, so no real difference there. The biggest is when you find out. If you are early action, you'll hear back on before February 1st. If you're considered regular decision, you'll hear back on before April 1st. So certainly encourage you to shoot for that early action date on November 15th. Obviously very quick information about who we are, but a lot of other opportunities to engage with us and learn more about us at colorado.edu backslash visit. A lot of virtual opportunities to learn from our current students, what it's like to be a current student, um, virtual tours, videos, sample lectures, other further information sessions, on-demand content, trying to create as much of an experience for you to learn about us while we can't necessarily welcome visitors to campus at this point, but hopefully we will be able to soon, but certainly encourage you there to visit that site to engage with us a little bit more. And finally, my contact information too, so that if you have any other questions, I am the admissions counselor that works with students all from the state of Georgia, as well as the rest of the Southeast. So please feel free to reach out to me with any additional questions. Thanks so much, Brad. Just a reminder before we start our final presentation that you can use the Q&A widget to ask questions specifically of any institutions or in general, and we'll address them all after our final presentation, which is from the University of Tennessee. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Courtney Kinsey. I'm the Georgia Regional Representative for the University of Tennessee Knoxville. Um, I'm actually based here in Georgia myself, so I'm really excited to share a little bit about Rocky Top with my fellow Georgians. Um, UT Knoxville has been around since 1794, uh, two years before Tennessee actually became a state. So we have a very rich tradition of education and service, um, being that we are the Tennessee Volunteers and we are in the volunteer state. Um, Knoxville is about three hours north of the Atlanta area. Um, and it's also the third largest city in the state of Tennessee, um, comparable in size to Columbus, Georgia, somewhere between Columbus and Macon. Um, but Knoxville is very accessible by three major interstates. Um, if you're from the Atlanta area, we're just right up I-75 past Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, and we also have an airport nearby if you're venturing out a little bit further um, than a drivable distance. There are tons of great shops and restaurants just minutes from our campus um, that keep our local community entertained, um, as well as festivals, farmers markets, theatrical productions, concerts. Um, all kinds of fun entertainment things. Um, and then also Knoxville is nestled right in the middle of the Smoky Mountains um, and our campus is right on the banks of the Tennessee River. So if you have any interest in outdoor activities um, from kayaking to snowboarding, hiking, mountain climbing, um, all of those things are about a 40 minute drive from our campus in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, uh, which is one of the country's most visited national parks. So we're really lucky to have it right in our backyard. The university is also made up of a little over 24,000 undergraduate students. So we are considered a large public university um, with about 20% of our undergraduate students coming from out of state. Georgia is actually our number one out of Tennessee market. So most of our out of state students come from Georgia, um, specifically Atlanta and the Northern Georgia area. We're also about 20% minority students um, and 19% first generation college students. So we are really trying to grow um, and become a more diverse and inclusive campus um, in all areas. 
We are considered a Research One Carnegie institution, so experiential learning is really important to our campus um, in terms of academics and also working with um, folks like the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, um, and other partners around the state. Uh, we're also a land grant university and we are Tennessee's flagship university. So we are one of the oldest institutions in our state. Um, and again, just have a really rich tradition of education, research, and excellence. Uh, we have a little over 360 undergraduate programs for students. Um, as you can see here, this is a list of some of our academic colleges. Um, some of our programs include business, engineering, um, a direct admit nursing program, social work, education, architecture, agriculture, humanities, and all pre-professional degrees, including pre-med, pre-vet, pre-pharmacy, pre-dental, and pre-law. Uh, we have a world-renowned forensics program. If you ever heard about the body farm at UT, that's part of our forensic anthropology degree program, um, and several nationally ranked programs in the fields of architecture, engineering, and business. Um, several of our programs also offer five years bachelor and master's combination tracks, um, and all have opportunities for experiential learning and internships. Before I briefly talk about our admissions process, I wanna direct you to um, this QR code on the screen. If you're able to scan this, it will link to our application page on our website, so you can kind of follow along. Um, but we allow students to apply two ways to UT. You can apply through the Common application or through our application on our website, um, beginning August 1st of your senior year. Um, all students have to submit an application, a self-reported academic record, and an application fee. There's also an essay requirement for all students, um, and some majors have additional requirements beyond that. Our first application deadline is coming up on November 2nd. That's our early action deadline. Um, students who apply by that date will get their decision in mid-December. And then our regular admission deadline um, is December 15th, so students who apply by that date will get their decision in mid-February. Um, if you're interested in being considered for scholarships, honors programs, um, et cetera, certain competitive majors, and you definitely need to apply by the November 1st or November 2nd deadline um, and get your decision in December so we can consider you for those other factors. As far as student life goes, we have more than 700 clubs and activities on our campus, including student government, faith-based organizations, service-based, um, Greek life, Division I SEC athletics, um, and then more than 300 study abroad programs so that you can really build your own unique University of Tennessee experience. Um, we're also a campus with a lot of really rich traditions from painting the rock um, to participating in the vol walk and then my personal favorite sailgating, which is our version of tailgating on the Tennessee River um, right outside of Neyland Stadium. Um, so before I wrap up, I do want to share my contact information with you all. Um, this QR code will link you to our virtual brochure if you want to take a look at our um, admissions piece for this year, which has more information about the university and our various programs. And then my contact information is on here as well. If you would like to reach out via email or phone to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting or just learn more about UT, um, as the Georgia Admissions Counselor, I'm happy to walk you through that process. So thanks for being here tonight and go Vols. Great, thank you so much, Courtney. All right, that has been all of the presentations by our various institutions. And it seems the Q&A is a little bit on the quieter side. Um, so if you do have any questions, certainly feel free to submit those as we have a few moments left this evening. But in the meantime, while we wait for any potential questions, we will bring everyone back and just sort of ask a, a quick follow-up question on all of your institutions. And certainly we can go in the, the order that we originally presented. But um, obviously some campuses are open and some are closed right now and visits may not be an option. But when they, when they do become available and students have a chance to check out your campuses, What's the one spot that you think they should make sure they visit? Uh, so I'll start since I went first. Um, our campus is currently open because we're really small. Um, and so we're very lucky uh, to already be distanced. But um, our favorite spot that we take everybody is the coffee shop across the street. Because um, it was started by Tusculum students 10 years ago and they still own it. And uh, it's the best coffee on earth. I challenge anybody to find better. So you got to come visit. Yeah, we are we are actually open for visits as well. So if y'all find yourself in Fayetteville, find yourself on our campus, definitely check out Old Main. Old Main is our oldest building on campus. It was actually established in 1874. So there's a lot of history in that building. Um, but within that building, actually just outside the building, you'll find the names of our first graduating class engraved into the sidewalk. There were only nine students in that first graduating class. And so that's a really neat place to go and take a picture, check out those names uh, and just get a feel for our history on campus. 
I would probably say um, one of my favorite spots on campus um, is our brand new science building. Um, we have an incredible um, cutting edge facility. It's actually right behind me, um, but it's really fantastic um, with lots, lots of um, like innovation labs and um, it's really fit. It's really great. Um, outside, right outside of our campus is also a, a town called Dunleary. It's between us and Dublin. Um, it has a pier, it's on the ocean, um, and so all of our students love going there too. At UCI, really the park that I highlighted is um, a, a favorite for many people. You can see it in the picture behind me. Uh, we even, so we have seven theaters on campus, but one of those theaters is a Elizabethan style, Shakespearean style uh, theater in the round, and we build it in the middle of campus every summer, which because it's sunny pretty much all year, we can do such things. So it's a really beautiful part of our campus is the park. All right, and CU Boulder um, definitely would be our Center for Academic Success and Engagement. On the fourth floor, you have a terrace that has a large bronze buffalo statue of Ralphie, our mascot, with the backdrop of the Flatiron. So it, absolutely, if you're visiting and are considering becoming a prospective student or even our current students, it's one of our most photographed places on campus. At UT, my favorite spot on campus is called The Hill. Um, it's kind of the most iconic spot on our campus. It's on the front of our admissions brochure, um, but it's just um, connected to Ayers Hall, which is the oldest building on our campus. Um, and it's kind of a tradition for students to hike the hill um, because it's the highest peak on our campus, um, even though it is pretty hilly overall. And it gives you a really great view of the stadium, the engineering campus, and several other hot spots on campus. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to all of um, you for joining us this evening to view our various presentations, as well as to our panelists for sharing um, their institutions with us. When this webinar ends, there will be a link to a quick four question survey, and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, just a reminder that this was one of just many sessions being hosted this week. So be sure to sign up for additional ones. And in about a week's time at the same website where you initially registered, you'll be able to find a recording of this session, as well as all others taking part as part of um, Georgia Virtual College Fair. Thanks so much and have a great evening.